we've got some pretty strong easterlies predicted for the next few days. It's done quite well and from the boat point of view. Wow, he looks tasty. So we're anticipating a pretty fast sail down to the Bhutan Islands. Do we need to make a move because I've got to get a plane. Kill it. So what do you do when you wake up in the morning at five o'clock and you can hear the sound of the wind outside and you can look up through the hatchway and you see a clear starry night? Well, you get up, don't you? Get the engine on and off you go and then pretty soon you're sailing. So here we are, we're leaving Maiton. We've left Maiton behind us and we're sailing into the, into the dawn. We've got a 45 mile sail. So we thought if we start early, we'll get there early. sail here, uh, 7.9 knots is our high, highest speed this morning. Uh, we've only been going for two hours and uh, we have done 11 or 12 miles already which is good and yeah just a great north, uh, sorry great easterly, anything between 12 and 15 knots and just pushing along it for another great sail. Here it is, one of our most favourite places in Thailand, and it's Koh Rock. What's just happened? We caught a fish. We caught Millie's enormous white bream. Oh wow, he looks tasty. Now if you'd caught him half an hour earlier, I could have put that in our curry. He's got so many spikes. Right, in there, my, my, uh, my gloves. Can you just get the gloves? Someone's happy. Emerge. Well, that's it from Co Rock. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a quick visit. Never mind, time to push on. We've got some pretty strong easterlies predicted for the next few days. So we're anticipating a pretty fast sail down to the Bhutan Islands, which is the last stop in Thailand before we would go across over to Malaysia. eights regularly and uh, top speed so far is 8.4 I think 8.5 so uh, yeah winds picked up to 20 odd knots and uh, we're flying along here 
that's a pretty good sail. Hesper's optimum speed is 20 knots and that is because we can keep all the sails out so even at 20 knots we don't have to reef remember we've got very high cut uh, Yankee as a foresail and of course with the in-mast furling the sails are cons considerably smaller than a fully battened uh, setup so uh, 20 knots she really starts to go and she, she feels comfortable she doesn't feel overpowered uh, there isn't too much lee helm or weather helm on the steering wheel and she's feeling good of course different conditions different wind uh, we're just off the beam so it's just behind us um, but uh, she is performing beautifully and this is the kind of sail that I think is the perfect sail. Okay, since most of this episode is about sailing, thought we'd have some Sailing Lessons 101. Points of sail. So if we assume that the wind is coming in directly from the top here, the first thing to remember is that there is a certain area in which you cannot sail. And that is approximately 45 degrees true to the wind. Anything after that, the first point of sail is called close hauled. And that is between anywhere around about 45 degrees to approximately 60 degrees, give or take a few. The next point of sail is called a close reach. And this is where the wind is anything between 60 to around about 80, 85 degrees. When the wind comes across the beam, this is known as a beam reach. Now we have the wind behind us and this is known as a broad reach. And when the wind is directly behind us, this is known as running. When the wind is coming over the starboard side, so the sails are on the port side, that's a starboard tack. Likewise, when the wind is coming over the port side of the boat, that is known as a port tack. Simple. We are now in the Bhutan Islands and uh, last night when we had that incredible sail yesterday afternoon we ended up anchoring all the way down there actually close to Bhutan itself which is one of the islands and uh, actually on the coast of Rawi the south of uh, that island the bigger one over there it's a very nice spot but we've got these really strong easterlies at the moment and consequently we were getting quite a bit of fetch coming through there so it wasn't particularly comfortable. So this morning we have motored across the little bay in among the islands and we are now on the southwest corner of Adang which is the bigger of the four main islands here. After that we then have to work out how we're going to get back to uh, uh, Langkawi because uh, those easterlies are going to make it quite difficult. Lippy, where we've been the last couple of days, just waiting for the wind to turn in the direction that might help us get to Langkawi, but it's not really turned and we need to make a move because I've got to get a plane. So just come round the headland and we're going straight into wind at the moment. Weather forecast says it should get a little bit better, become more in our favour, but let's see what happens. So we've just set Esper's autopilot to steer to a certain wind angle rather than uh, to a waypoint. When we, when we do this, we are steering to an apparent wind angle rather than the true wind angle. There is a difference between the actual true wind angle and the apparent. Okay, quick idiot's guide to true wind versus apparent wind. True wind is the wind that we feel when we are stationary. It's the wind that you see in forecasts. 
Apparent wind is what we feel on our faces and also what the sails feel when we are moving on the boat. It's a combination of the boat's motion and of true speed. And as sailors, we are mainly concerned with the apparent wind, not the true wind. In this example, we have 10 knots of true wind coming over the beam. We're sailing at a speed of five knots. And if we look at this simple vector, we can see that both the true wind and the boat's motion gives us the apparent wind. You'll see that it is both forward of the true wind and the arrow is longer, meaning the apparent wind is greater. Now the reverse happens when we sail downwind. Using the same true wind speed and the same forward boat speed of five knots, the forward speed of five knots counters the true wind speed, giving us an apparent wind speed of five knots. That's 10 knots of true wind speed, minus five knots of forward motion, giving us five knots. Unless you're sailing dead downwind or sailing into that no sail zone, the 45 degree vector either side of the bow, then the apparent wind will always be coming from farther ahead than the true wind. And if you're sailing between a beam reach or close hauled, i.e. the wind coming over the front of the boat, then the apparent wind will always be stronger than the true wind. So unless we're looking at a weather forecast or if we're measuring the wind speed whilst at anchor, we are almost only ever concerned with the apparent wind speed. And if anyone ever tells you they can sail 30 degrees to the wind, you should ask them, are they sailing to the apparent wind or to the true wind? If they're sailing to the true wind, then they are probably lying. The chances of that are nigh on impossible, apart from very specialist boats. It's almost always the case that we can sail 45 degrees to the true wind or greater. The closest we've got so far is about 30 degrees apparent, which is very, very close. That's, that is very tightly close hauled. The actual true wind angle, as I'm looking at the uh, dial down here, is close to 45 degrees. But uh, by increasing that apparent wind angle, or rather decreasing it, it means that we get a little bit closer to our waypoint. Because at the moment, we're actually steering beyond Langkawi. But uh, by doing this, the autopilot will try and maintain an exact course to the wind. Controller. Yeah, a new, a new controller, regulator. regulator, a new regulator, and um, we're now seeing a lot more ampage coming in, so our power is uh, is pretty good now, we're really pleased with the way we're, we've got the fridge on nearly all the time and we're using the laptop, so that was all really good. Um, then the other main, major thing was we spent a half a day trying to work out why the engine wouldn't start first time. I'll let you go into the details, but you sorted it out, and so now one click engine starts. First thing in the morning, power coming in through the solar panels, and just now on the way over across here to Lankawi, you had a good old play with the autopilot, and we've now discovered that we can set the autopilot's driving system. We can really fine tune it, um, and the way we've tuned it now means that we're using a lot less power and there's a lot less strain on the RAM. So, three good things. So as we cross over the border from Thailand to Malaysia one last time, we wave goodbye to PP, to Vipi, to Koh Rock and Phuket and all those other wonderful places. And we say hello to Langkawi, which of course you've seen before, we've seen before, uh, but it's time to get down to some business and get shit sorted on Esper. Mm -hmm.